Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Wire show. My name is Jake Fishman. I'm the host of the show and the editor of the Cardiac Wire, and we have a great episode for you all today. Uh, we're going to be diving into instant resinosis and some breakthrough treatments in this space, and we have an excellent guest to tackle that subject with us. We have Dr. Dr. Janar Santhanathan uh, from Boston Scientific. Uh, he's the chief medical officer for interventional cardiology there and uh, really a, a strong expert in this field, and I'm pumped to have him with us. Dr. Santhanathan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks so much, Jake, and um, it's a great pleasure to be on the call and um, look forward to our conversation today. Uh, yeah, that makes two of us. Uh, maybe to start us off, if you can give us just introduction to your your background in cardiology and and at Boston Scientific. Yeah, thanks, Jake. So um, I'm a uh, interventional cardiologist by training, both in coronary and structural interventions. Uh, I've trained mainly outside of the United States and New Zealand and Canada, and I currently uh, still practice a bit clinically in Vancouver and Canada. Um, I also am the chief medical officer for interventional cardiology therapies at Boston Scientific, which I've been doing for almost a year now. Can you help us understand instant resinosis and how it's been treated for U.S. patients up until now? Yeah, I think maybe at a high level, just for uh, a viewer, is maybe just describing what uh, instant restenosis is as a concept uh, or as a problem statement. You know, right now, when you think about percutaneous coronary intervention or or treatment of disease inside people's arteries, usually the primary problem is a narrowing inside what is functionally a tube. Uh, and so we as interventional cardiologists use different tools um, to treat those narrowings, uh, often a balloon to mechanically dilate the artery, but then often a stent is placed. Uh, and this is just a metal scaffold that helps keep the artery open. And modern day stents also have a drug that's on the stent that helps maintain the patency or longevity of that therapy. However, nothing in life is forever, uh, and those stents can can re-narrow over time. Uh, and there's a number of different factors that can influence that, both how the stent was placed in the first place, but also just biological factors, both intrinsic for the patient, but also their risk factors that that stent can re-narrow. Uh, and that's called instant restenosis. And that can occur as much as 10% of all PCIs that, that go through um, clinical care. One of the treatments that I guess it may be more emerging is is drug coated balloons. Can you can you help us understand how those work? Yeah, so drug coated balloons as a whole, um, you know, I, I may have mentioned right at the beginning that the most stents we use nowadays are basically a metal scaffold with a drug on it. Now imagine a therapy which is essentially the balloon, but has the drug coating on the balloon itself. So in addition to not only just mechanically dilating that narrowing, they also then deliver the drug to that area of restenosis to treat that re-narrowing, but also help prevent it coming back again in the future. And that's functionally what a drug-coated balloon is compared to a balloon that is uncoated. It has that drug, which, uh, for example, is paclitaxel. Uh, and you're basically applying that drug without having to place another layer of stent, uh, which has some downsides to using that strategy. How does that compare to other traditional therapies for insanity stenosis? Yeah, it's a great question because you know this therapy, as we as you've alluded to, has not necessarily been in terms of drug coated balloons has not been available in the U.S. Whereas where I've trained and where I've practiced, it's been part of clinical care for well over a decade. Um, so the options you have when you're treating a artery or a stent specifically that has re-narrowed uh, are really three main buckets. You can use a balloon that is an uncoated balloon. So it's simply just a balloon with no drug on it. Uh, and what that does is essentially just a mechanical dilatation. The downside of that is that the long-term success of that is much less. Um, if there's a risk of re-narrowing. The second option you have is to place another stent uh, inside that previously failed stent. Um, but similarly, that also has some downsides, particularly when you start getting down to smaller vessels. It may not be so easy to place another stent. It's a little bit like the Russian doll effect. It is only so small that you can go. Uh, and also, we we know from, from data that playing multiple 
placing multiple layers of stent may also accelerate future failure of stents and further really narrow. The other third option, which is not as common, is brachytherapy, so application of radiation. Um, and that is not necessarily the easiest thing of almost readily available therapy across the United States. And so in comparison, using something like a drug-coated balloon is just a much simpler option uh, for patients. And certainly outside of the United States is, is most often the preferred treatment choice for patients with uh, instant restenosis. So you talked about, you know, all these years of um, drug-coated balloons being available outside of the U.S., but not in the U.S., and that, that all changed earlier this year uh, with uh, Boston Scientific's announcement of that the agent drug-coated balloon has now been approved. Um, can you help me, I guess, understand more about the spe that specific product, the, the, drug -coated, the agent drug-coated balloon, and what makes it so significant for U.S. patients? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Jake. It's a it's it's a massive step forward for patients and for clinicians that care for these patients. I mean, you know, treating coronary disease requires an armamentarium of different tools, and this this tool, this drug coated balloon, has been missing um, in the United States. And so, the agent drug coated balloon is the first to market product for uh, this type of device in terms of drug coated balloon uh, in the United States. It's essentially uh, as we've described already, it's a it's a balloon that has paclitaxel coated on the outside of it, and you use that after you've appropriately prepped the vessel uh, as a treatment option for these patients with ISR. Uh, and so, really, it's a welcome step um, forward for clinicians in the U.S. because it's been available for so many years outside of the United States and is often the preferred option for treating patients with ISR globally. Maybe tell us a little bit more about the evidence that you know, that allowed this product to gain uh, approval in the U.S.? Approval of a new device in the United States uh, is a, a long regulatory process, and, and that's something we've been committed to doing with particularly for this device. Um, and part of that process requires doing a randomized clinical trial, so uh, comparing one therapy versus another. And in this case, it's comparing the, the agent paclitaxel balloon uh, versus an uncoated um, balloon angioplasty. Um, and so basically these patients were randomized. Uh, we had what was an interim analysis that was presented at TCT and the results were really staggering and, and in a good way, uh, I would say, you know, the results were met with a round of applause. And, and what were those results? Well, it showed a dramatic reduction, a 44% reduction in target lesion failure, uh, that the rate of adverse events occurring uh, in the agent arm was 17.9% for the primary endpoint versus 28.7% in the uncoated balloon arm. Uh, and there were much lower rates of myocardial infarction. And importantly, there were no rates of stent thrombosis. So the technology was not only effective, but it was also safe. Um, and so that was really, you know, welcomed with a round of applause. It was a great pleasure to actually be in the audience when that happens, uh, because it really shows the palpable excitement in the room from clinicians. Uh, and those strong results were also backed up by the full cohort of stud of the patient population that was presented at CRT um, later that year or the subsequent year. Um, so it was great to see that. In, in major impact from the clinical data with the agent drug coated bullet. I remember that when those study results were released, and I remember those exact applause. That was probably the strongest reception I saw at uh, TCT last year. So kudos on that, and how exciting to have you know a product that so so um, I guess comes in with such strong evidence supporting its effectiveness both internationally and through this this trial in the U.S. Um, when we look a little bit. You know, further into the future with the introduction of the agent TCB uh, and breakthroughs like this. And we think about uh, kind of the future treatment of coronary artery disease. Uh, how do you see products like this impacting um, ISR treatment in the US? I, I think the uptake is going to be immediate for ISR. I mean, I think it's essentially going to be a switch, right? This will be, in my mind, the preferred treatment because and I say that with some confidence just because we've seen this happen already uh, outside of the United States. It's the preferred go-to option. I mean, there's been over 100,000 patients treated with agent globally. Um, and so, and there's been well over 10,000 in clinical trials. So it's, it's a well-studied product. 
um, and well-utilized product. So certainly for ISI, I don't I see that being just uh, a no-brainer to use it for um, an instant restenosis to certainly use a drug-coated balloon. Can you share a little bit more about how the Asian drug coated balloon works within the instant restenosis workflow? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question, um, Jake. Because I think you shouldn't look at the uh, agent drug coated balloon as just a single tool. It's part of an armamentarium which we often have to use when treating these patients. Uh, you know, for us, for example, as a company, we're very focused on uh, what we have termed modern PCI. So that's a C prep treat, uh, and what that really means is that you're using imaging to help diagnose the problem, which is very critical. Uh, in instant restenosis is to understand why that stent failed. Uh, preparation, uh, which is crucial because you need to use a lot of different tools, whether it's an uncoated balloon or uh, other atherectomy devices to prepare the lesion and make sure it's adequately dilated. Uh, and then with the treatment part, that's where uh, the agent drug coated balloon comes in to apply that drug uh, to that affected area within the stent. And so what I really hopefully comes across, it's a continuum uh, across that spectrum of C prep and treat where you need these different tools to result in a successful result. Thank you so much for sharing these insights. And it's like I said, it's really exciting to see product like this come in uh, that could have an impact so directly. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share about the agent drug coated balloon um, or instant restenosis treatment? Yeah, I think, you know, it's uh, it's often good to just sort of discuss or end with where we would like this technology to go through to in the future. You know, we certainly, if you look at what the clinical need or the type of patients that are coming in, you know, patients are becoming more complex. The type of disease that we have to treat is also becoming more complex. Uh, and you may recall several years ago or well over a decade now, there was a lot of enthusiasm about bioresorbable stents, you know, having an option that was metal free. Um, and what we're really excited with, with the agent drug coated balloon is that this provides very much a similar kind of theme in that a metal free option where medication can be delivered without the need to leave any metal behind. And there's lots of clinical scenarios where that may be of utility, um, certainly in small vessels, long disease, bifurcations. But uh, certainly as we see trends outside of the United States, people are using this for other indications. And so we're really excited to see where this technology could be studied uh, and then hopefully be applied in other clinical areas that could impact patient care. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. Um... And really, something to look forward to, both at you know, in the short term with the treatment of instant restenosis, and then you know, like you said, uh, metal-free treatments uh, for coronary disease. Um, so, thank you so much, and thanks for sharing you know all your insights and kudos on what you've achieved so far. Uh, definitely looking forward to the next steps. So, thanks for coming on. Uh, for the folks in the audience, uh, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, you learned a thing or two about instant restenosis and a emergent treatment for those of you who are in the U.S. Emergent treatment for for your patients with incense recent stenosis. Uh, thanks so much, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.